So the sun is moving on. Uh, it's uh, completed its run through gateway number seven. We could call it uniformity. We could say it conformity, depending on how things have all turned out there. But it's just seeing that thing of wanting to bring people together to observe or look or be involved in something going forward in a very logical, particular way. So a leadership quality around that, a sense of direction, perhaps even a sense of purpose around it. Either marching together in sync or warriors progressing forward using their own wits and their own intelligence. And then we move on to gateway number four. And gateway number four is the gateway of mental solutions. In the traditional Chinese, the translation literally is something like youthful folly, right? The folly of the youth. So kind of the, the inclination of things that are not thought all the way through or considered, wisdom isn't necessarily applied to it, to whatever the mental solutions might be. So here, let's have a look in the wheel. Uh, here we are, we're up in the bottom right-hand corner of the wheel, uh, moving on forwards. I say forwards counterclockwise as the sun appears to do around us. Of course, it's us going around the sun. Other things are happening. The 63 in the, over on the left side there, the gateway of doubts uh, that make up the channel, the 63 to the four, this channel of providing mental solutions to things. Critical perception, that thing of looking at something, is it working, is it likely to keep on working? Is Does it have a future outcome that looks assured? So doubts on the one side, this doesn't look right in the four, how do we fix it? How do we make things right? So uh, logical mindset, critical perceptions, uh, the, the Chinese word for it, uh, you know, uh, youthful folly is quite often the case here. So the, the four is driven in some way or other, got to fix this, quick fix, let's get it done, let's sort it out. And so great thing to understand about this gateway is it's not personal. It's not about fixing people. <laughs> it's not about fixing, you know, people's, um, ways of doing things in life. It's about arranging the circumstances around people in ways that they work better. Anyway, the fourth gateway has this push, the pursuit of answers. It's always looking for an answer on some level or another, if an answer is even needed in the first place. Admitting an experience with any problem leads to the possibility of finding right solutions and right timing for them. Why would we call a solutions mechanism youthful folly? Because very often there's this jumping to conclusions, got to get fixed. And we know in this world, yeah, it's, it's very much a kind of logical or man's way of dealing with life. That particularly we get to hear from a woman, oh, these things are not working right for me. And basically a woman just wants to be heard in a sense. It's not like they want the man to jump in and fix things. It's just, you know, these are things that are disturbing me, troubling me, whatever. Can you listen to my story? And the fourth gateway always has that inclination to want to, oh, let me fix this for you. Don't, don't worry. Don't tell me any more of your problems. Uh, let me just get in there and fix it. And that is something of the attitude that goes behind the fourth gateway here is, oh, there's got to be a solution around here somewhere. Let me take you out of your pain, your misery. Let me sort it all out for you. And again, it's just to say it is not a personal thing. The fourth gateway finds solutions for situations, for problems. So a commentary on this, being quick with solutions does not necessarily solve problems or lead to lasting satisfaction because mental solutions are at best partial and temporary. Right, so it doesn't matter how great the solution sounds. Yeah, this is going to work. This is going to fix it all. Sooner or later, it'll turn around and everything will come around and we'll see, oh, well, it only covered it. And in the end, even though I do get the answer for something, 
you know, I do fill in the crossword puzzle, I do fill in this thing or other, I fix this thing. There's no lasting satisfaction that necessarily comes out of that. So mental solutions, yeah, just they're very handy, quick fix, but there's a time and a place for all of these things. So let's have a look at the lines. The first line laying the foundation for the fourth hexagram is called learning. Good timing is a gift that enhances all problem solving. Right, it's about timing. Is there really, you know, is there really a need for a solution in this particular moment, in this particular situation? Do I have to get involved here? And the first line just says, look, you know, this may not be the, the moment in time to be providing a fix. Of course, there are situations in life where absolutely a quick fix is needed. You're always learning the art of recognizing when and where to provide mental solutions. It's a lifetime thing. When you see a line is colored in blue like this, um, it just it basically means it's a it's a something that evolves over time. You know, as a kid, oh, let me fix this for you. You know, and then you grow up and see, well, that really, you know, it wasn't really needed at that particular time. It looked like a good idea at the time, just trying to be helpful, all of that. And then we find out, no, it's actually good to hold back on not everybody wants everything fixing all the time. So you're always learning the art of recognizing when and where to provide mental solutions. Right? It's just this understanding. What became very evident in human design that when we make decisions about things in life, you know, the, the mind is a great place to uh, look through all the different possibilities of what could take place. Right. But when it comes down to making decisions, the mind is not the place to go for it. Even, oh, but I've got this solution. Oh, yeah, I can really fix this all up. I can make it all right. And then we find out, no, if acting on as generators, gut response, those of us that are emotional, following our feelings, you know, being really clear in our feelings before we apply or recommend fixes for things. So the moon's placement here, acknowledging that profound solutions are available when you really need them. Right? Just seeing, you know, the mind will get into some very, very interesting possibilities of providing solutions for things sometimes. But generally, the satisfying solutions are going to come from a much deeper look into the situation. To be really, what can I say, wholehearted or really absolutely clear about it all. So the patience in learning. You tend to implement resolutions that ignore a natural timing to problem solving. Yeah, do, have we come across that before of seeing, oh, I, let me fix it. And then we find out that it's completely out of time, right? We're either behind or ahead of the time of when the fix needed, even if it was needed in the first place. Second line comes from this place of being very natural. Oh, let me help you out. Let me sort this out. And we call the line kindness. And just seeing that recognizing everyone has their own strengths and weaknesses. Some people need things fixing, other people don't need things fixing, but recognizing everybody has their appreciation about life and things that are working out for them, things that aren't. And the second line, in its very natural way, when very relaxed and very at ease, says, you know, can I help you out? Can I offer something here? Can I give you a suggestion? Logic can be used in many ways and you may include others in your understandings or not. We find that the second line is very happy in its own company comes across novel concepts, novel ways of dealing with things. And so logic is always a very interesting thing. Is logic a natural progression of things? Or that does the second line very often come up with something that is not in the, in the, what can I say, the ordinary stream of thought processes? You come to appreciate that not everyone is going to understand your viewpoints. Classic. Yeah. I mean, there's the thing of the mind. The mind can take off in all kinds of different tangents. And the second line just has to realize this. I've got a perfect solution here. Can't anybody else see it? And sometimes you'll just get to see. Other people can't see it at all. They can't recognize what it is that's being pointed out. Mars gives it a slight push here. In a hurry, you might sometimes take advantage of other people's slowness and disorder. Well, you know, they're just getting in the way. They're not be able to sort things out for themselves. Let me just get this thing sorted out. Let me get this fixed. All right. So always thinking about the fourth gateway, the fourth hexagram, the quick fix in a way.
and we find out very often the fix isn't needed in the first place and even if it's a quick one it doesn't necessarily have a lasting result involved in it and thereby no lasting satisfaction well i sorted it out but the third line always in a situation of, of wanting to commit or not to find that resolution am i really involved in this thing or not now the fourth gate naturally has solutions and so the third line here can be careless a love of solutions that may not actually solve the problem <laughs> i think that's very recognizable sometimes oh but it's such a great idea this is going to be so good but it's not exactly aligned with the need of the moment if you allow it your lazy mind will settle for easier solution rather than a relevant one All right oh come on let's just let's just stick it let's put a band-aid on it let's just do some kind of quick fix here and uh you know it's actually not what's really needed and it's out of time as well here venus gives it a particular flavor you have a potential to use solutions for appearances rather than for effectiveness oh but it's so clever you know we'll, ju we'll just stick something over it we'll put a facade on it you know it'll look so good and it actually doesn't really sort out anything doesn't solve anything at all it just it looks good and there it is that's that's the bottom line with the fourth gate and it's not to say there's anything wrong with the fourth gateway it just it's very earnest in putting out solutions but we'll just see some of them fall very short of what it is that's really needed and then the un the underside of this and any tendency for diminished responsibility will lead you to meager accomplishments so <laughs> You know, here's the third line in it's in it's just saying, look, just whitewash something and you'll just see that you'll end up with meager accomplishments. You'll just see there's no satisfaction in just putting a facade on something, just covering something over, just not really applying a relevant fix for it. So then we move on to the fourth line, which is a line where there's always this urgency with the fourth line. We are all involved in this together. We all have some kind of input here. We all want to be involved. And so the fourth line has a tendency just to put out any solution at all and then justifies it. Yeah, well, of course, it's like this and like this. And, you know, there it is. It can, it can really bend what we might describe as the laws of logic, if there are such things. A busy mind that somehow is going to find an answer for everything. Right? It'll blow things off sometimes. Just uh, let's just be done with it. Here, here's something. And of course, I'm giving you this the right solution, the right situation here. You can validate solutions for any scenario, sometimes going beyond any normal level of logic. So, you know, in English, there's this wonderful expression to think outside the box. Right? It's like so something just drops in and you know, here's a perfect solution. Here's, a, here's a something that goes outside of the normal ways of looking at things. When we look at the fourth line here, there isn't a box. There isn't a box. There is no constraining way in which logic can be withheld here. It's like, here's an answer. You know? And here's why I'm giving you this answer. You find mental formulas, realistic or not, for every conceivable life situation. It's just there it is. It's a busy mind. And doesn't necessarily follow anybody else's ways of thinking at all. Can literally, from going from A to B, can go all the way around the universe and back, you know, and here's why, I, how I got there. <laughs> so just, it's a mind that uh, literally can justify any outcome, any solution. If you try applying mental solutions for everything, you'll be frustrated when they don't work. And here's the difficulty with the fourth line, you know, are my solutions gonna be appreciated? Are they gonna be rejected? And the difficulty for any fourth line is when a solution that seemed all right at the time gets rejected, then the, the fourth line kind of folds back in on itself. There's that certain fragility. Oh, they don't like my concepts. They don't want me to fix anything. I don't really belong here. The fifth line, fifth lines always have this potential leadership possibility or the overview, the way of pointing things out to other people, how they can, how the other people can find solutions. And the line is called being broad-minded. 
Solving difficulties by being open to any and all resources. Right, a lot of people have all kinds of great ideas, a think tank or, you know, what's your input here? What's the, what's the input there? Bottom line with the fifth line is, can it may, be made practical? With a gift for problem solving, you sometimes diminish others' lack of ability to understand. Right, I'm cleverer than you are. I've got a better idea than you. I'm more good at sorting things out than you are. And it's just, again, youthful folly. It's just this thing of, well, it's a solution. It may be a quick fix. Does it have lasting effects involved in it? The Jupiter side of things, you have a cleverness for solving problems that is teachable to other people. This is a great art in introducing the whole solutions mechanism to other people, how to think through things clearly. And so the four with the fifth line can actually do that to show people, here's the logical progression of things with these concepts. Here's this, here's the situation. Here's a potential outcome if we think it through. And then the other side of it, you're potentially cynical if you have to tailor your solutions to meet others' approval. It's always a thing with the fifth line. You know, is there a projection? Well, you're supposed to do it like this. You're supposed to help me out. And fifth lines can so easily get involved in rescue scenarios, rescuing other people, rather than being very purposeful and direct and clear in what is the solution actually needed for this situation here. Sixth line. The four with the sixth line and the 47 with the sixth line are two lines that just fascinate me. The 47 is the abstract way of making sense out of life. The four with the sixth line is the logical way of seeing how life is going to progress. And I call these two lines, I call them a booby trap. <laughs> It's almost like wherever you see this in somebody's design, they are so clever. They are so clever with their mind. They can sort out anything. They can give a logical solution for anything in the four line six. The 47 line six can make sense out of things that don't make sense. <laughs> and so I call them a booby trap because all of us have been so thoroughly trained to use our minds, to think things through, add up the pros and cons and this and that. And we know with human design is until you find your inner authority, your inner matching of frequency to whatever it is that's going on in the world around you, until you find that matching of frequency, the tendency is to go off in the head. And the four with the six line can be so clever. It can work out anything. And I call this line cleverness. Too clever for your own good if you think mental solutions endure or that they bring a satisfaction over the long term. And a booby trap, because sooner or later you realize it doesn't matter how clever my brain is, I've got to find my inner authority somewhere or other. I've got to find the authority that makes my life so absolutely clear. In human design, we find people have what we call outer authority as well. And it's about being really the witness of all the concepts, all the things that are happening around to come to a deep, profound understanding, logical understanding of what it is that's taking place. So unless disciplined, your mind will always try to dominate life with its solution mechanism. And you'll find the people with the four line six, that's it. The mind just takes over and runs the show until they realize, wow, this isn't really doing it for me. I have to go deeper inside myself. So the key word again with the four, with the six line here is a disciplined mind. You know, are you in charge of your mind or is your mind running your life? And that's a question that comes up for just about everybody on this planet. And we'll just see the chaos that comes about as a result of overthinking and trying to go along with mental solutions of things. Here, Mercury gives it a mental discipline comes through your patience, awareness and applied experimentation. Right, just see what is the right order for a solution? Is it really needed in the first place? Is it something that anybody's ans asking for? I have this viewing of the fourth hexagram of wanting to fix everything. And it's the potential of being in this channel of critical perception. You know, the four on its own wants to fix everything. It's always looking around, where's something I can fix? And I just have this scenario of, of being invited to somebody's house. 
and you know the house meeting you at the door and you're going through the door and you're saying hello and you're giving a hug but out of the corner of your eye you see a picture on the wall that's a little crooked and the tendency rather than to greet the host is to go across and straighten out the picture that is so strong or to straighten out somebody's tie or their outfit or their hair or something or other and that the power of the fourth gate oh let me fix this for you let me straighten this out for you the power of this fourth gateway can be so strong sometimes that it just it's so impersonal it's so rude in wanting to fix things that absolutely it's not appropriate at all so it's not limited to the sixth line this is part of the fourth gateway of just wanting to get in there and fix things so mental discipline comes through your patience awareness and applied experimentation what is appropriate what's not is that host ever going to invite you back again if you before saying hello to them you go and straighten out their furniture for them don't think so <laughs> right fourth gateway is just well here's a potential fix the ma side of things here you can be arrogant even though you realize the shortcomings of your mental solutions Oh, I'm so clever. My mind is so good. I'm way ahead of you. I'm thinking way, way down the road of things that can be sorted out and straightened out. And there comes that potential arrogance there. And we all have to be very watchful about that. Okay? Solutions are amazing things. They're great fun. The mind is a great fun device. It's a brilliant device. It's a brilliant biocomputer. But the fourth gateway has to learn patience. It has to learn that whole thing of what's the right timing to deliver a solution if a solution is even needed. And is that solution actually going to take us into a preferred or good outcome? An outcome that really merits the input. So there we are. Let's leave that there for now. And uh, we'll be back again when the sun moves on further forward through this particular sequence. Remember at the bottom, the bottom trigram is the Trigram for Khan, which is water, which is danger, right? So just be aware of that. This is the sequence we're going through for these next few weeks. And then we'll evolve into the next round. Okay, see you next time.